Nazarene, we're glad you're here. The Proverbs writer tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they're safe. And we know that at, in times of trouble and times of need and in times of praise, that Jesus is the name whom we call upon. Stand with us as we sing the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. A righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Sing holy. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord most high. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved amen at this time we'd like you to make a connection and greet your neighbors Sing, Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord most high. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. May be seated. Thank you. Ushers, if you'll come, we'll receive the evening uh, tithes and offerings, and may the Lord bless us and help us as we give tonight. All right, brother. This young man's 16 now. He's old enough to pray, don't you think? Uh, you pray for the offering. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Pastor Donnie. Uh, join again with us as we uh, sing. What are we singing? All hail the power Thank of you. Jesus I put my name. music in the wrong order. <laughs> All hail the power of Jesus' name. <laughs> All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown Chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him. Pick up a hymn and turn to page 130, I Will Sing of My Redeemer. 130 in your hymn books. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer, sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me, with his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, on the cross he sealed my pardon. Paid the debt and made me free, and made me free, and made me free. I will tell the wondrous story, how my love to save he in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing of my redeemer sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me with his blood he purchased me 
On the cross he sealed my part, and on the cross he sealed my part. Pay the debt and made me free, and made me free, and made me free. I will praise my dear Redeemer, his triumphant power will tell how the victory he giveth over sin and death and hell. Sing, oh, sing, of oh, my Redeemer, sing, oh, sing, of oh, my Redeemer. With His blood He purchased me, with His blood He purchased me. On the cross He sealed my pardon, on the cross He sealed my pardon. Paid the debt and made me free, and made me free, and made me free. I will sing of my Redeemer and His hand to me he from death to life have brought me son of god with him to be sing oh sing of my redeemer sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my part and on the cross he sealed my part paid the debt and made me free and made me free and made me free. Would you join us as we sing our prayer course this evening? Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the privilege that is ours to know you as the Lord and Savior of our life. Thank you for reaching down into the depths of sin and reaching and picking us up and transforming and changing our lives. Thank you for the protection that you've given to us 
for the shield of righteousness, for being our sanctuary, for being our hope and our help, and Lord, for steering our ship through the waters of life. You've been there with us, and we give you praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for every believer in this congregation who loves you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thank you for their willingness to give of their time and their talents and their efforts. The Heavenly Father, that we might grow together and grow in your likeness and be drawn closer to you. Lord, I thank you for the young people of this church and for our youthful leadership, for Pastor Chris and those who assist him. I thank you for Don in April and Lord, for Pastor Don in his and April's leadership among the children. For John and Rachel, Lord, in their work with the middle school, we give you praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the leadership in our church and Sunday school and every teacher, for all of those, Lord, who work in the children's department, for every adult Sunday school teacher. We thank you for the board, the church leadership, and for some of the new members of the board this year. We just ask God, continue to bless us and help us. Lord, I pray for renewal and revival in my own heart as well as in the heart of this church. And I pray that in the weeks and months ahead that we'll see some, uh, some fruit for the labors. We've had a dry season of winning new converts and new people. And I pray, Lord, may that season change. May there be an, uh, an onslaught, a, a flooding of, of unsaved people in our midst and within our context that we can reach and touch them and share the love of Christ and that they'll be transformed and changed and made into new creatures. I pray, Heavenly Father, for your continued will among us. Draw us all closer to you and draw us closer to one another, Lord. We'll give you the praise for this. Bless Brother Scott as he ministers the word in a few moments. Be with the Pinkertons as they sing and thank you for for the worship time with total praise. Just everything throughout this day, God, we've just uh, been rejoicing in you. And Lord, tonight, I believe all of us would just want to thank you for the sunshine of the day. Uh, Lord, we, we know that the sun shines all the times, but sometimes there's clouds that block the sun from reaching planet Earth. And Lord, here in our spot of your grand making, uh, here in this spot in, in Indiana, the sun has been on uh, bright shining all day and God it lifts us and touches us and we've had a hard winter as you very well know but Lord we are grateful that you've been with us every step of the way every snowflake that has come down every every patch of ice that's been stuck on our driveways and the streets every turn of every corner you have been with us and we give you praise blessed be your name tonight blessed be the name of the Lord this evening Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you are doing in and among us. Let's sing in closing just a portion of that chorus, Brother Vince. Let's sing it together. Mm. Oh, oh, holy, holy. thank the Lord for his goodness to us and I, I don't know about you but I've enjoyed uh, the book uh, not a fan I, I, I read it uh, several months ago and I've been kind of working through it again looking at the highlights uh, and and uh, trying to refocus on some areas I appreciated uh, the Wednesday night studies that we've had in some of the small groups and that we've had in here uh, appreciate uh, Pastor Scott and his teaching and in just a few moments he's going to uh, bring tonight's lesson uh, for this week. I think you, are you have you kind of combined last week's and tonight since we had an interruption last week. Uh, so uh, we're going to try to combine those two lessons together. Just a reminder of a couple things. The uh, uh, the Sutter Mill that's coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, the sign up sheet is in the foyer. Uh, sign up for participation in it. It'll be here uh, before you know it and you need to sign up. 
This, this, we, we need the, uh, the sign-ups to know how to prepare, so it's important that you sign up and, and uh, make that commitment. <clears throat> also, next Sunday morning, uh, our uh, uh, friend, my friend, and he's become a friend of many of yours as well, uh, Dr. Stan Toller is going to be here to minister the word next Sunday morning, and I'm looking forward to him coming. He's going to be with us for uh, Saturday night, and then I'm going to be gone Sunday evening on a, be a chauffeur for a few days to a couple conferences in this area. So uh, uh, if you'll allow me to take just a little time off uh, to do that, I'd appreciate that. And so, uh, but he's going to be with us Sunday morning, and like I said this morning, if you bring a first-time guest, somebody that's not been in our church maybe for several months, and you bring them. I've got several of Stan's books uh, that I'll have him autograph and give to you, one to you, and I'm, I'll, I'll sweeten the deal a little bit. I'll give it to you and your friend. Uh, so I have four, four of his books, and I have several copies of each of those four books. So you bring a friend, <clears throat> and I'll give you a copy and him a copy, or the, your guest as well, and I'll have him sign those copies as well. Okay, so let's turn our hearts over to the ministry and song and then to Pastor Scott as he brings the word. Before we start singing, uh, the song we're going to sing is The Longer I Serve Him. Uh, that's one of our father's favorite songs that he used to sing. Um, I'm grateful and I know Beth and the rest of the kids are grateful that we had um, Christian parents that taught us the right way to go. Um, and soon it'll be a year that we lost him. Um, it's been tough. And just a word of uh, prayer. Um, there have been signs that uh, mom's cancer might be returning. So we got to deal with that issue. So just pray for us.
Well, good evening, and I uh, certainly hope uh, you are reading the book, as Pastor said. How many of you are actually reading it? Occasionally. I didn't, I didn't ask every day or if you're getting all the way through it. I'm not asking that, but I'm just saying you're getting into it, and, and it's getting into you. Have you been noticing a little bit of a difference between what he's talking about, a fan and a follower now? Are you starting to get the picture? Uh, hopefully it's coming more and more clear as you go through Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, uh, reading through the book. Hopefully things are, are starting to gel a little bit, and you're starting to get a hang of this thing. Um, in moving from a fan to a follower, there's key elements that really are going to take place. And uh, I wanted to just mention to you, I'm not going to have PowerPoint tonight, so you'll need a Bible. So go ahead and take your Bibles open, and we'll look at John chapter 15 here in a minute. Uh, but also, if you do need study notes or little notes to write down, we have some of those somewhere. I don't know where they all are. I've landed, but if you need some, let me know. If you don't have any and you want one, just raise your hand, all right? Everybody else got one? Good. All right, super. Uh, we're going to try to work on two different lessons, and, and I tried to compile the thoughts into one, which was very difficult, because <laughs> they they were really good to think about individually, but we're trying to blend these. And I'm going to talk about this whole idea of friendship with Christ, uh, friendship with Jesus. And you know what's funny? Guys at work will say, you know, I've got this buddy. And, and they'll talk about that buddy. And then in two minutes later, they'll go, you know, I have this other buddy. And I got this buddy. And I'm like, you got a thousand buddies, buddy, you know, and I, I just laugh at it because these guys, sometimes I'll know who they're talking about, and they don't know them any closer than anybody. And I'm like, he's your buddy, really? And I just have to laugh at it. You know, this buddy has got this car for sale, and anybody need a car? He's my buddy. And I'm like, really, what do you mean by that? That's one of the very loose terms that we use today. But let me give you another one that probably most of you know, and maybe some of you are involved right now with it, Facebook. I mean, literally, right now with it, you got it hanging, sitting right there in front of you, don't you? <laughs> I know, I know these things. And uh, so every five minutes, your brain just triggers you, and you're like, man, I wonder what's out there. Got to go in there and look, and what are we looking at? Our friends, all right? Uh, how many of you actually do have a Facebook account? Go ahead and admit it. Yeah, we, we're bad, aren't we? Um, Facebook. How many friends do you have, all right? Anybody remember how many, quote, friends you have? 63 friends. All right, somebody else. Anybody else? How many friends do you have? 1,400. This guy is a popular man. Anybody else? Might be 1399, but close to 1,400. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you remember how many, quote, friends that you have? Some of you really don't care about your friends, do you? <laughs> All right, I know you got friends out there. I have people who want to be my friend on Facebook. People I don't even know. And you want to be my friend? Sometimes I still friend them so I can boost my numbers because I don't have 1,400 friends. I only got 323 friends, barely at that. And, uh, but, but ask me, how many of these 323 friends do I really spend time with? How many of these friends do we really associate with? How many of these friends do we go out to dinner with or spend uh, vacation with or, or really share our life with? Not many. So what we're getting at is, uh, well, i got to stop here for a second. I saw, um, uh, who was it, uh, somebody that came on, one of these Hollywood movie stars, and he had four million friends. That's pretty impressive. And I thought, but how many people really know him. It was Robin Williams is who it was. I thought, how many people even know him? It makes us really think about so many people know who Jesus Christ is, but do we really know Jesus? There, there's, a, there's a huge difference there. So the difference is the depth of relationship that you have with that friend. That's what makes everything different. When you're talking about church relationship and Christ relationship, there's a big difference. You can love the church but not really know Jesus. So there's a big difference we're talking about, and, and that's what we're going to try to cover tonight. John chapter 15, Christ goes to the heart of discipleship and he explains what it means to be a friend 
of his. All right? So stand together. Let's look at verse 13 through 17 as we uh, look at being a friend with Jesus. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if. Everybody say if. If. If you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I cho chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit will that, that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Everybody say the word friends one more time. And ask somebody next to you, are you my friend? All right, would you do that? And you may be seated, all right? <laughs> the first thing we, we've got to understand here is, is that all of us are chosen to be a friend of Christ. Nobody's excluded from that. We are, Jesus has chosen you, chosen me, chosen a lot of us to just be his friend. But we've got we to gotta understand that, though. Jesus isn't wanting another buddy, all right? <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, how are you doing, all right? Jesus isn't wanting you to like him as your friend, okay? Uh, and to just kind of follow him in an internet way, okay? That's not what he's describing here. It's a friendship that's built on one of the most powerful things, and that is called love. And love is going to make you do some pretty crazy things, um, how many of you remember the song, The Things You Do For Love? Okay, some of you don't want to admit where you, where that you knew that song, but I remember that song. Like walking in the rain and the snow. When there's, okay, now you're getting it. Okay, some of you are catching along. Now you know the song. The things you do for love that you wouldn't do any other way. You wouldn't do it just because you know them. You wouldn't do it because they're related to But you'll do it for love if you understand what love is all about. Let me give you an example. Cindy dated a really, really good but geeky, slender guy years ago. That was me. Who absolutely had absolutely no fashion sense whatsoever. And I still don't, hardly. And uh, one day, I, I was, uh, we were playing a softball game uh, down in Martinsville. And uh, she was on the team. And we were, we were friends at this time. And, uh, but I was wearing the most horrid outfit. I had these old sweatpants on. They were, they were kind of this nasty looking yellow and it was really not pretty at all. But what made it even worse, I had a different colored yellow shirt on. So I looked like this giant banana out in center field and it was, it was awful. I still don't know why you like me. Um, I, I still can't figure that out. So I realized, you know, she must like me beyond my fashion sense. And she must like me beyond my hairdo because I got calyx all over the place. And she must like me beyond my money because I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> and I knew it wasn't that. But maybe it's because I drove some pretty amazing cars. I remember this old brown Toyota. It looked like a giant tur uh, dirt clod that I just, I was like, really? Um, it, was, it was so bad, and I almost said what I used to call it all the time, but I ain't going to say that, because <laughs> you can't polish that, baby, all right? And that's what it was, that's as bad as it was, and that just, just wanted to come right out of there, didn't it? Oh, Jesus, help us. <laughs> it was a Toyota Corona, not Corolla, Corona. How many of you ever even heard of a Corona besides the one that you, okay, all right, we won't go there either. Um, it was the ugliest car, and, and it was so bad, I went on a date with it, not with Cindy, but I went on a date with it, and the, the passenger side door would not unlock. So here I have this lady that's in her long dress, and she's got to climb over my console onto the other side to go on a date with me, buddy. I was, I was, a, great, uh, I was a great date, man. When I didn't drive that thing, I remember driving my dad's 1986 Buick Regal with burgundy lower seats. Yeah. Buddy, I was in then. Oh, it was awful. I hated that car. And, and if I wasn't driving that one, then I got to pick up Cindy in this big old green monster Oldsmobile 88. 
Oh my goodness, it took like an hour to turn a corner. That's how long this thing was. You had to make wide right turns and it was awful. I really don't know why she still liked me. But there was something deeper in our relationship than the car that I drove and the money I had in the bank and the clothes that I wore. It was something called love. And in it, that, something about that made our relationship like no other relationship. I don't have the same relationship that I have with her as I do with my boss at work. I don't have that kind of relationship with, with even a lot of my other family members. There's a unique relationship there that I don't find anywhere else. Let me describe this a little bit more. When Jesus says, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. When you get to the point when you're willing to lay your life down for somebody else, that's what Jesus is describing here. He says, I want you to understand. I want you to love me like I'm loving you. Be willing to give everything you have for me because I'm giving everything I have for you. Uh, let me give you a, an illustration. Two inseparable friends were in World War I. They had enlisted together, they trained together. They were shipped overseas together and they fought side by side in the trenches. During an attack, one of the men was critically wounded in a field filled with the barbed wire uh, obstacles all around him and he was unable to crawl back to his foxhole. The entire area was under a withering uh, enemy crossfire and it was suicidal for him to try to reach him. But yet, he decided to try. Before he could get out of his trench, though, his sergeant yanked him back inside and ordered him not to go. And he said, it's too late. You can't do him any good. You'll only get yourself killed. A few minutes later, the officer turned his back, and instantly the man went out of the trench, ran after his friend. A few minutes later, he staggered back, mortally wounded now himself, with his friend, who is now dead, in his arms. And the sergeant was both angry and yet deeply moved. What a waste, he blurted out. He's dead. You're dying. It just wasn't worth it. And the man with his last breath said, oh, yes, it was, Sarge. When I got to him, the only thing he said was, I knew you'd come. That's love that makes you do something so crazy, but yet you're willing to sacrifice everything for them. That's an incredible love that Jesus is really trying to describe here. Paul shares in Romans 5, verse 8, God showed his love for us, those of us who were dying because of our sin. He sent his son to die for us in the middle of all that. He could have said, Jesus, you're going to go, but you're going to die. Don't do it. It's not worth it. But no, Jesus said, no, we have to go. And, and here he comes down here and he offers himself up for us. Now that's the kind of love he's talking about. That's the kind of friendship he's really describing here. So I want, I'm going to stop here for just a second. If you're absolutely struggling with being good enough for God, don't struggle anymore, all right? Don't go there. If you think, if you're continually feeling like you're guilty over past or, or even present failures, and you think you're never going to be worthy of God, don't ever go there because God has already shown you, I love you. No matter what, I love you. And he's done the craziest thing he could ever do to show you that through his son on the cross. So don't ever think you're not loved, ever, no matter what. You are loved. And he chooses you to be his friend. Pretty powerful. But let's go to the second part. Because I am loved, does that make me God's friend? God loves me, I know that. But does that make me God's friend now? <clears throat> everyone is loved, but not everyone has a personal, intimate relationship with their Lord. Everybody is loved, but not everybody knows him the same. Uh, let's try to define being a friend of Jesus for a minute. The Greek word for friend here means a friend at court. And it really describes the inner circle around a king or an emperor. 
Uh, also in John uh, 3.29, the same word refers to the best man at a wedding. And here's what we're trying to describe here. The friends of the king would be close enough to him to know all his secrets, to know his heart, to know what he's thinking, to know what's going on, to be in the inner loop. They knew the king. They knew everything about him. They were close enough. They had his ear all the time. They listened to him. They watched him. They, they saw what he was like. They understood him. That's the kind of friend. He trusted them. They trusted him. If he would tell them something that he knew that they wouldn't go out and blurt it to somebody, that's the kind of relationship he had with them. When you talk about the, the, the best man in a wedding, you don't just go find somebody on the street to be your best man at your wedding, do you? You think of the person that you honor the most, that you care about a lot. Somebody that, whether it's a family member or, or a close friend, you're thinking, man, I, I really like this guy. He, he respects me. I respect him. I trust him. He trusts me. I want him to be my best man. That, that's a relationship you don't find everywhere else. So he's really describing something very uh, unique here. You know their heart. They know your heart. Fans don't take time to know Jesus' heart. They don't take time to know what he's thinking, what he wants, what he desires, what he loves, what he cares. They don't care about that. And followers are all the opposite. Followers are saying, Lord, how can I know you more? How can I understand you more? How can I walk with you more? How can I grow deeper in you, Lord? Every day, Paul said, I want to know you and the fellowship of your sufferings and, and your resurrection. Lord, I want to know you, all that is about you. Show me it all. King's friends would also be subject to him. And they'd have to obey his commands in this kind of relationship. He says, if you're going to follow me, he says, guess what? If you're going to know me, if you're going to know my heart, I want you to also obey me. And that's what the king's relationship was here. I have noticed uh, through movies or, or shows different things that describe working for the president of the United States. And there are some presidents I would have really enjoyed working under. But I'm a little bit too young for that. Abraham Lincoln would have been a great guy to work under and really be able to say, you know, I serve at the pleasure of the president. I'm here. I'm a trusted friend. I'm a trusted ally. Whatever you ask me, whatever you say, I'm going to keep it between me and you. I'm not going to go behind your back. I'm going to, we're going to have a great, strong relationship here. I serve whatever you ask me to do. I serve at your pleasure at the office of president. That's the kind of relationship we're talking about here. Lord, I serve you in your honor and in your office. I serve at your pleasure. Whatever you ask me to do, I'm yours. I'm that kind of a friend to you. Does that make sense? Rattle your head there, all right? Okay, good. Fans have a hard time coming to grips with surrender. With that point of getting to that relationship of saying, you are Lord. Whatever you want, that's fine. I want to have a deep relationship with you. Not, not as a fan, though. <laughs> we don't say that. But as followers, that's what our hunger is. We want to serve. We want to follow. Look at verse 14 and 15. He said, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Now, what's the difference between a servant and a friend? Let's give you some uh, very simple uh, uh, explanations. Servant follows out of duty. Follows out of duty. They're paid to do what they do, in other words. Has no real desire to know the master, nor will he ever know his master's desires. No desire to know them, nor will he ever know them. Because the master and him don't have that good a relationship. You're a hired hand, you're an employee, I'm going to treat you like that. And, and we don't really have a trust relationship at all. No love is lost at the end of the day when that servant goes home. Let me give you an example of that. <clears throat> when I leave work uh, at, at Global, 
wherever we've been for the day, when I leave work, the last thing I think about is my boss. I am so sorry if that offends you, but <laughs> I do not think about my boss when I leave. I don't think about the other co-workers either, matter of fact. I don't think about anybody else. I think about going home and doing my own life now. I don't care, honestly, what's going on in their minds. And that sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? <clears throat> but I don't. I don't go home and, and lay awake at night and tell Cindy, man, I wonder what's on my boss's mind right now. Boy, I really think about him all day long, you know. I just wonder, is he hurting today? Does he feel all right? You know, I don't think about those things. We don't have that kind of really, I'm an employee. I go there, I do my job, and I go home, okay? <laughs> Maybe you feel the same way about your job. How many of you ever think about your boss? We don't, do we? Let me, you think about your boss here. <laughs> Maybe a little bit different in our situation there. <clears throat> Let's think about a friend, though. They follow or they serve out of choice. And that's motivated by love. It's motivated by love. You desire to know your master. And your master wants to share everything with you about the future, about his, quote, business, what's going on. You develop a keen and close relationship out of trust, out of care, and out of love. You have a bond. That's a whole lot deeper than a servant's. Jesus is saying, when I see you serving me and longing to know my heart and my ways, then I know you are very serious about this relationship. When you want to know me, I'll let myself be known to you. When you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. I'll be there. You come to me, I'll come to you. You take a step to me, and I'll take a step to you. You want to know me, I want to know you. That's the love relationship he's really describing here. If, we, if he were uh, really here today, I wonder if Jesus would say, you know, I don't want you just to be a worker for me. We've got a lot of workers for Jesus. But he says, don't just work for me. I don't want someone who simply follows my rules. We've got a lot of people that like to toe the line, but I'm not, I didn't come to set a more exacting set of rules. That's not why Jesus was here. But I want to share all that I have with you. And I want you to share all that you are with me. Every day, I want us to take a walk through life. I want you to grab my hand, and I'll grab your hand, and we're going to go through life together. We're going to face things together. We're going to experience life together. We're going to go through the ups and the downs. We're going to go through everything together. That's the kind of relationship Jesus Christ wants with us. Amen. Let me give you the third and last part. <clears throat> Friendship, though, requires intimacy. And intimacy requires openness. Now, all the men just got scared. <laughs> Intimacy. <laughs> That's not a popular word today, especially with men. Uh, I don't sit around uh, when we're out on the machines and the excavators and think, guys, let's talk about in intimacy right now, all right? I really feel intimate with you. You know, we just don't do that. Maybe you do, and that's between you and them, but I don't do that, all right? Uh, to most guys, intimacy is an icky word. It's one of those things you just kind of avoid because it has emotions in it. And no man wants to really show his emotions. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that we are going to have small groups, all right? We're going to hold hands, sing kumbaya, and everybody's going to share your heart out and just cry and boo-hoo tears and have Kleenexes all over the place. That's not, we're not going to go there with this. But there's something about intimacy I think we're missing. We are missing a deep relationship with our Savior that we need to have. We're missing something that, that compels us to, to move beyond the surface of where we are spiritually. Something that's going to motivate us more than just doing the right things. Something that's going to motivate us more than I've got to go to church tonight. <laughs> it's this love relationship that pulls you towards him and says, man... Just need to know you more, Lord. Every time I open your word, Lord, there you are. And man, my heart is just drawn to you. There, there's an intimacy. It's trusting someone enough to let down your defenses. 
going beyond the surface of our life and cultivating a strong relationship with someone. It's not like the lady I read about. She wanted to marry four men in her life. She said each one would help her with four things she needed the most. First, she wanted to marry a banker, second, a movie star, third, a clergyman, then finally a funeral director. When she was asked why, she answered, one for the money, you know it, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to what? Four to go, that's right, buddy. Uh, so often, our relationships are that shallow, aren't they? They really are. Uh, when we talk about, you know, I know him, he's a friend of mine, but really, we don't know them. And often when, when we say that, people will say, I, I'm a Christian. What we're saying is, I know who Jesus is. But they don't know him deeply. And he doesn't know them. And we've got to get beyond all of that. And the only way we are is to show our cards. <laughs> is to really open up our heart to him. And really begin to open up ourselves and say, okay, God, search my life and help me to understand who I am, what I'm about, what I've done. Help me to grow in you. Help me to change whatever needs changed in my life. Let me give you an example of this. Cindy and I have been married 22 years now. Our anniversary was Friday, and we're waiting for your cards in the mail. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's in the mail. I'm sure it is. And uh, she is so amazing that she does love me. And I'm sorry I didn't ask her permission to say any of these things tonight. But uh, hopefully she'll still love me tonight. Um, when we began dating and I, I, I lived the way I did and dressed the way I did and drove what I did, da, 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 we began with small talk. Uh, simple little conversations of, you know, well, where do you go to school, you know, and, and where do you live, and, and what do you want to do for a career, and, and where do you want to eat tonight, and all these little simple little fluffy conversations that uh, you just kind of enter into that relationship, kind of tiptoeing through the water, and you're like, oh, this is so cute, this is so precious, and you're just kind of going a little, little daintily through that. Well, 22 years later, boy, we can knock it out and drag it out, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just want to see if you're listening to me. But our... our conversations go a whole lot deeper now and our relationship is a whole lot stronger now because we're open and we're honest and we talk to each other we confront each other <laughs> we, we we deal with issues that are pretty big pretty complex but we share our hearts all the time every day personal areas of concern struggles we're facing, um, always, always cultivating the relationship, making it deeper and deeper and deeper. Much like the old oak tree grows up tall and strong, partly because of the wood, but partly because as it's being blown and beaten all around, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. If it didn't have that beaten on it all the time, it wouldn't be as strong as it is. But that's the relationship we want to have with our Lord. What we're talking about, when Cindy and I first started, it all started with a commitment to each other. I never quite knew when we were, quote, dating. But there was a time when we knew within our hearts we were going out. <laughs> we were more than just friends. We were close. And now, 22 years later, we have each other's best interests at heart. Imagine yourself 22 years later in your relationship with Christ. How deep do you really want to go with him? Do you want him to know everything about you? Do you want him to work on everything in you? <laughs> and are you ready to know everything about him? Your relationship with Jesus starts with a commitment to know him and to begin sharing your life with him. But it needs, it needs, it needs to go way beyond that. You've got to go a lot deeper in your relationship with him, beyond that service, where you open up your life completely to him, and whatever your past is, it's all there. And you're hoping for a great future with him. It's not surprising that one of the most common responses to intimacy is fear. The reason why men, most likely don't like to be intimate or close with people 
and, and reveal who they really are underneath the mask that they may wear all the time is because of vulnerability. We don't want to show weakness. We don't want to show our, 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 our frailties or our chinks in our armor. We don't want to uh, reveal uh, all these. So we're afraid. So we kind of put up defenses and we say, yeah, you can know me this far. And we hold everybody off at a distance. But you know the closest friends that you have, they know just about everything about you. They know who you are. They know what you're like when you're upset. They know what you're like when you're going through tough times. They know you. As you walk with the Lord, you share your vulnerability. Vulnerability, Boy, I wish I could say that. Your, your weakness, all right, with him. His love casts out your fear of judgment. Why? Because perfect love casts out fear. When you love him and he loves you, you don't have to worry about being judged. All right? You don't have to worry about that. Your relationship is good. You don't have to worry about condemnation. You love him, he loves you. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about guilt. You love him, he loves you. You're walking hand in hand day by day. There is no fear when you're walking with a close friend. There's no fear there. That perfect love casts out that fear of judgment. 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in that light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. We have a close bond, a relationship that is deeper than all the others with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, continually cleanses us from all sin. That relationship just keeps growing and growing and growing. You have a, a spot that you need to take care of. Lord, I'm not doing too well in this. And he says, that's okay. I'll forgive you. Let's keep walking. Let's just keep walking, keep walking. That's the relationship he wants to build with you. Let me close with this. Um, I want to invite you to ask the Lord how deep your relationship with him really is. And I want you to, and maybe, maybe you never ask the hard questions. Maybe you've always got that elephant sitting in a room and you never want to ask about it. I want you to begin to ask him about the hard questions in your life. Lord, how do I really feel about you? How do I really um, love or dislike your word? Lord, do I really want to go out and be your witness? Or do I really want to just stay home and watch TV? <laughs> You know, those are challenging questions. If we want to go deeper with the Lord, we've got to begin asking those. Lord, am I just going through the motions at church? Those are honest questions. And when you ask them to a friend, hopefully you'll hear the great response of, you know what, I love you. Let's work on this. Let's go deeper in this relationship. But you'll never go deeper until be, you become honest where you are spiritually. All right, Sarah Lynn, I want to ask you to come up here and play something. All right. It is in your hymnal, page 625. It is a very brand new song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <clears throat> no, it's not a new song. It's an old song, but I wanted it to uh, remind us of a simple truth. Couldn't find anything that quite fit for tonight. <clears throat> But it's a simple song that, that says, you know what? An incredible friend. Someone who cares deeply about you and your problems and your cares and your sufferings, maybe even your sin. He cares more than anybody else. And he's the one that has given up himself for us. Greater love has no one than this. <laughs> He's the one that died for us. And he chooses you to be his friend. Now, not just a buddy, not just to like me, but somebody who's going to give them my heart and I'm going to give him his heart. That type of scenario. We're going to grow together. We're going to honestly look into our lives. We're going to, I'm going to learn him. He's going to learn me. And, and I'm going to seek him with all that I have. I'm going to look in his word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to get into the scripture. I'm going to find a, a way to serve him. 
man, Lord, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? That kind of a relationship. So we're going to sing a verse of this, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell Vince earlier, but uh, if you want to sing it, that's wonderful. That'd be great. Uh, but I want us to stand. And here's what I want you to do as we uh, close. I want to in invite you, and I'd like us to just sing this a little slow. Uh, I don't normally do that, but I would like to sing this a little slow tonight. And I want to invite you, the majority of you love Jesus. I know you do. But I want to encourage you. If you would like to take a moment to pray like I want to tonight, I say, Lord, I love you. But I want to know you more. I want to go deeper in who you are. I don't, want, I, I don't want anything in my life to be a hindrance to our relationship. I want my walk with you to be as close as it absolutely could be. And you just want to pray a simple prayer like that tonight, saying, Lord, I want to be the friend that you need. I want to be the friend that you can count on in my life. I'm yours. I'm dedicated to you. I'm committed to you. I want to follow you. I want to serve you with all my heart. That's the prayer we want to pray tonight. So as we sing this through a uh, verse or two of this tonight, I invite you. Take a few moments. Tell him that today. If you want to, just come and pray. Let's sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. All our sins and griefs to bear. we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer To know Him deeper you, you, it, you haven't backslid, you haven't walked away by any means, but yet your, your heart just says, Lord, I want to know you deeper. I, I, I want to be a friend that knows your heart. I want to know what kind of coffee you like, so to speak, all right? I want to know you, Lord, more than I know anybody else in this world. And I want you to know me. All that I am, all that I'm like, all that I, all that I do in a day's time. I want to talk with you more, Lord, than I talk with anybody else in my day. I, I want to read your word like it's my love letter personally written for me. That's what I want to know. I, I want to hear your voice among all the other voices in this room. I want to hear your voice. A sweet and still and, and tender voice. I want to hear that. But Lord, I can't do that if I don't open myself up to you. And I can't draw closer to you, Lord, if I don't want to believe and, and trust you. <laughs> I've got to take those steps, Lord, to get closer to you. Let's sing one more verse. Which fence? Thank you. Every trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer Amen. If you're not going to come and pray just be seated where you are. Let's pray for a few minutes would you? Lord we uh 
We love knowing you. We love being loved by you. We love walking with you day by day. But Lord, our hearts are yearning for more. We have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, but Lord, our taste buds aren't satisfied yet. And we want more and more of you in our life. When we're watching the TV, Lord, we want to just be able to sense your presence and turn it off and just speak to you for a little bit. When we go to work, Lord, we want to sense you riding with us, Lord. And when we turn on the music, Lord, we want to hear the sounds of Christian music or whatever it is. We want it to sing praises to you. And we want to, we want to enter into that worship because we love you, Lord. Everywhere we are, everything that we do, Lord, we want to be reminded. We want to draw closer to you, Lord. We want to know your heart, Lord. We want to be a friend of you. You've chosen us, Lord, to be friends. And we want to draw into that relationship and say, Oh, Lord, I don't want to just love you from a distance. I want to love you with all that I have and all that I am. And Lord, every time we open up your word, Lord, we want to see those words just jump out of the pages to us. That tell us about who you are and what you want us to know and how you want us to grow in you and, and how much you care about us, but also how much you want to deal with these areas in our lives so that we no longer live like that. You want to conform us to your image, Lord. Oh, please do it. Please do it in us, Lord. We offer up ourselves for that. We want to be called friends of God. We want our neighbors to know that we are friends with the Almighty. That we love our Savior, we love our Lord like no one else. And if you talk to us, Lord, we want to be able to say, you know what, man, I like talking about the ball game and I like talking about the weather or whatever, but man, can I tell you about my Lord and Savior? He is so precious to me he has changed my life. Lord, you mean so much to us. And we just want to tell you that tonight. We love you tonight. We honor you this evening. We thank you for coming and giving up your life for us. Thank you for your sacrificial death. Continually always put that hunger in us, Lord, to know you deeper. As Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. We want to know you, Lord, today in that kind of way. Search us, know us. See if there be any wicked way in me, Lord, and lead me into the way everlasting. I want my heart to be yours, Lord Jesus, nobody else's. Yours and yours alone. I want to have no other gods before me, Lord. Just you. Just you. Bless your people here in this church, Lord, and our wonderful family of God here. May we love you more than we love anything else, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us, loving this church. You are the head of the church. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we uh, are just praying here tonight, just taking our time with you, help us to re be reminded of your promises to us. Help us to be reminded, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. 
God, you're our refuge and our strength. You're a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains fall into the sea. We will not be afraid. Let us remember your promises today, Lord. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> what a blessing, Lord, to be your friend. To have you on our side and we're on your side, Lord. What a joy it is to walk with you. Bless your people here today, Lord. When we fail, and we probably will at times, don't let us hear the devil's voice of guilt. Let us hear your tender voice of love and forgiveness. And when we beat ourselves up, Lord, because we're not doing enough for you, remind us you love us no matter what we do. May our hearts be yours, Lord. You told us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, so mind and strength and to love your neighbor. Help us to live like that, Lord. Very simple, very easy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. 
creatures hear me, Lord. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. May God's grace and peace and strength be with each and every one of us and go with us as we leave this day. Shake hands with one another and encourage each other. And be an encouragement to others.